Hey, it's now time for Tech Talk number seven. Number seven. Boy, we've been doing this for 14 weeks now. Wow. Awesome. It's 1919. 2019. 1919. It was our fashion. 2019. I've ruined four or five checks already. It's 2019. Uh, yeah. we, we've been doing the show for a while. We've got some great stuff tonight. Some great stuff on. Well, we've talked about the new Apple stuff, the good and the bad, um, the Rodecaster Pro, getting your Sennheiser mic serviced and cleaned. We had questions from a ton of folks in the audience about soundproofing an airport, uh, dealing with um, setting your right sample rates, for example. Um, what's compression? What's normalization? Uh, what else here? We got uh, somebody asked about how do you build a sound booth? Well, we show you how. We'll show you we, how. we got a video for that. Um, dealing with the heat in Texas. Uh, dealing with production on the iPad. And is it a good idea to get your mic cleaned? We'll, we'll find out. Where and what, what I would suggest for that. All right. All that and more on VoiceOver Body Shop Tech Talk. From the outer reaches, they came. Bearing the knowledge of what it takes to properly record your voiceover audio. And together, from the center of the VO universe, they bring it to you now. George Whittem, the engineer to the VO stars. A Virginia Tech grad with the skills to build, set up, and maintain the professional VO studios of the biggest names in VO today. And you, Dan Leonard, the voiceover home studio master. A professional voice talent with the knowledge and experience to help you create a professional sounding home VO studio. And each week, they allow you into their world, making the complex simple, debunking the myths of what it takes to create great sounding audio, answering your questions, showing you the latest and greatest in VO tech, and having a dandy time doing it. Welcome to VoiceOver Body Shop Tech Talk. VoiceOver Body Shop Tech Talk is brought to you by VoiceOverEssentials.com, home of Harlan Hogan Signature Products, Source Elements, remote studio connections for everyone, VoiceActorWebsites.com, where your VO website isn't a pain in the butt, VO2GoGo.com, everything you need to be a successful voiceover artist, J. Michael Collins Demos, when quality matters, and VoiceOver Extra, your daily resource for VO success. And now, live to drive from their super secret clubhouse and studio in Sherman Oaks, California. Here are the guys. It's now time for Tech Talk. All right. But we got lots of cool My stuff. Favorite. Oh, I know. It's, this is where you get to to glow. There's sort of like this halo around you when we do this. It's... I need that. I need the, the halo from our last guest. Eric had a nice halo. Yeah, we'll work on that. <laughs> we'll try that for next time. But anyway, uh, in your tech update, cool stuff. Let's race through this and see what, what we can talk about that will enlighten yeah. The technical people. I won't waste a lot of time because we did get a ton, ton of, of questions. questions. And yeah. yeah, you guys can submit yours right now because we will get to them tonight. I won't I won't, I won't spend too much time on tech news, but um, new Macs came out. Apple's doing this weird thing now where they release new hardware, don't tell anybody, then have this big dog and pony with celebrities and say, we do television now and we do movies now, which, sorry, Apple, selling out big time disappointing but whatever they do new have they have new imax they look just like the last ones this there was i was hoping to at least see the new imax would have default uh ssds like you all the new mac you minis you do. still have to order that they still come spec with fusion drives they suck um okay they don't suck for the general user out there but they suck for us they they are they're they're not as well performing and they're just they're they look they're lame but if you buy a new mac whether it's five years old or brand new, get it with an SSD. Right. Trust me, worth it. Absolutely worth it. Um, uh, as I said, Apple, you know, what are you doing? You're become they're pivoting. They're becoming a service company, not a hardware company. So they're going, you know, 
all these companies that sell monthly services and make billions of dollars, maybe we should give that a shot. Right. Even so, though they're already making they're billions making of crazy dollars. money, but they're looking at their revenue flattening out, the plateauing because everybody yeah. has five iPhones. They've already bought. You know what? what you have a new iPhone. You have the 10R. What is new in this phone that is revolutionary, that has changed your life over your what was the seven? What did you have? Your I, I had a I had an eight. An eight. Okay. So what is the what is the the it thing in your 10R? Well, it, first off, if I want to open it, all I have to do is look at it. Uh, okay. There's, the dimple is gone. The you know it's like. So you know if I it it it, it knows way, who my I am. L, my LG does that too. Okay, just saying. Just saying. All, right. All right, but it does that. Uh, it's a. I think it's a little bit more secure that way. Yeah. You know, unless somebody cuts my head off and like hangs it in front of it. <laughs> got more they, problems to worry about. I know, but they've got nothing to grab onto either, yeah. which makes it a little easier. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, uh, the, uh, the camera is great. It's got the a 12, 12 megapixel camera. The camera's in it. always a little better. Yeah, when, when you know for shooting video. Yeah. Can't beat it. It's really, it's really great. Um, you have to get used to some of the, uh, you know, the the swiping. I guess swiping yeah. is the thing, you yeah. know, that's really important. But the best price, the best thing was, was the price, because I switched from one company that was charging a tremendous amount of money for yeah. our phones, yeah. and we got five phones. I mean, yeah. you know, me, wife, two kids, mm. and my mom are yep. using their iPhones. Yep. They bought our old phones, yeah, and it's costing us half as much. So, you know, that's pretty good as long as you're in a sprint area, yes. Which oh, isn't, yeah, really we want a sprint, yeah. So, uh, um, that's why I that's I, the other reason I like it. I also have a new iPhone. Let's hold my up, my new iPhone up in front of your iPhone. It's pink. Let's hold it up for size comparison, shall we? Mine's bigger. <laughs> <laughs> this is a iPhone SE in rose gold. Oh, why do mm. I have this? Because I wanted the, 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 the most affordable iPhone I could find that still is current. Mm -hmm. So this is the least expensive iPhone you can buy that still runs iOS 12.2, and it does all the latest stuff. I got this on eBay, Refurb. It looks like it was never, ever used, and I got it for 100 bucks, 100 bucks, and it is beautiful. It's, it's, an iPhone. it's a legit iPhone. It's called the SE, and it's the same brains and guts as the 7. So while it looks really old and tiny, it still has the... You know, it's it's still more youthful on the inside. It's so. still more powerful than the lunar module. <laughs> it's way more powerful than the lunar module. Yeah, this thing is it's it's significant. So I'm I got it because I wanted to have first of all a backup phone because yeah. this one is the Google Fi with Sprint, AT and T, and US Cellular. This one is running Track Phone, Pay as You Go, which is Verizon. So the theory is I have every damn network covered mm -hmm. at this point. Hopefully, with this phone, I'm, I've got it all covered. We'll be able to find you no matter where you exactly. are. Exactly. And when there's new things from the iPhone and my clients are going, did you try this thing? I can finally go, oh, let me try yeah, that thing. Yeah. About time, right? <laughs> um, anyway, so Rode Procaster, we mentioned that the... I, I keep calling it the Rode Procaster. It, it is, is the not Rode, the Rode Procaster. It is the Rodecaster Pro. the Rodecaster Pro. Pro. That name will always suck because it's too much like their other product. Um, it's great. I did a, a whole episode of the Pro Audio Suite. I did a whole YouTube on George the Tech about it. You can go watch it. It's entirely too long. It's a it's a programmable podcasting machine, essentially. Yeah, I mean it's it's super sophisticated under the hood, but it's super simple on the outside, which is the way it should be. It's easy to use. It has big, cool looking faders. Is it perfect? No, but it's also like a 1.0 product. I mean, it's literally the first mixer Roadcast has ever made. So I don't expect perfection right out of the gate. It, you'll watch watch my video. There's one little glitchy thing that happens with recording to the internal memory card mm -hmm. when you're playing back sound effects. Now, does that matter for voice actors? Probably not. No. Um, don't not buy it because of that one thing because it will not affect what most of you guys ever would do. But it, it's it's great. I check out the review over there at George the Tech on YouTube. Um, this last week, I I was in the area at Audio. I was near uh, this Retech. Repair place, repair place, service place called Audio Rehab. Um, how do I know about it? I mountain bike with one of the technicians there. Networking. And he and I geek about this stuff all the time. And uh, so I had a piece of gear that burned out. The power supply went poof while in the booth at a client's house. Oh, not good. Never a, a good thing when I literally hear a pop and see smoke coming out. The smell's not so great either. No. So I brought it in there and. Um, Anyway, long story short, I got I got a nice little tour of the place. So 
got to look around. And one good thing I took away from it, I mean, they do a lot of tech repair on like, they actually are the service center for Avalon stuff. So if you have an Avalon, they're the ones that are going to replay, uh, repair it. Um, but one cool little sidebar was that Scott, my buddy, he trained at Sennheiser. He actually worked at Sennheiser. And he did all the servicing on Sennheiser MKH416 mics. Wow. So he knows that mic literally inside and out. So if you have a 416 that needs to be cleaned or serviced, audio rehab in Burbank. Is he like a really skinny it. guy that he can like crawl in there? And... <laughs> no, he's not skinny. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, he's it's not my size. Uh, but uh, yeah, no, he's he, he knows his stuff. And you, you don't have to ship it off to Connecticut if you're in L.A. There's a local shop that knows oh, the mic know. and can work on it. So that was cool. I also did a little video of that place, and it is also on George. That one's on the George the Tech YouTube channel as well. You can go uh, check it out. All right. If you really want to see the inside workings of that of that of that place, yeah. but uh, it's it's your typical technician shop. If you've never been in one, check it out. There's gear everywhere. It's like a museum slash warehouse <laughs> stuff. Hopefully, neatly neatly stacked. Not too bad. Okay. I've certainly seen worse. All right. Well, that's good to know. <laughs> well, if you're wondering, if this is like the first time you've ever watched this show, one, where have you been? And two, uh, maybe you get the idea that George and I actually know what we're talking about when it comes to home voiceover studios. And some podcasting stuff. Too. And yeah, we we're in podcasting. Everybody's doing podcasting. Yeah. Doesn't mean everybody should be doing podcasting, right. but yeah, give it a shot. But if you got something to say, we can help you out. That's right. Uh, but if you need help with your home voiceover studio, if you're like totally intimidated about what it is you're supposed to be doing, talk to the guys that actually know how to do all this stuff. We won't overwhelm you. It's not as hard as it looks, but we at least make it look a lot easier than it actually is. And uh, is that a selling point? It is. Okay. Good. Well, because it, it may seem it's only easy once somebody explains it to you in a way that you can understand. It's easy when you know how. That's right. And uh, fortunately, you got two guys who've been doing it for, mm. I guess, a combined almost forty years. Yeah, I would say at least, which is more than anybody else in this business. <laughs> uh, and uh, you can you can you can contact either one of us, and uh, we will help you out. Uh, we have various services. Like, George, if they go over to your site, which is? GeorgeTheTech.com. Uh, you've got a menu. You can check out all the services at our flat rate, uh, stacks, sound checks, things like that. You can also hire me by the half hour, or you can bring me to your town. Uh, I'm going to be releasing a new product on my website soon that explains how to bring me to your city and get a group buy. Ah, good idea. And get all your buddies together, save a lot of money on travel and time, and get me to come to your city. So stay tuned for that. I should have it up in the next week or two. And uh, Dan, you also provide services similar to mine over at homevoiceoverstudio.com. Yep. Uh yeah, I'm I'm there. I answer your questions. I do consults. If you really need to learn from zero to being fairly competent at this, you can talk to me. I actually have a master's degree in education. I know how to teach this stuff. And I will get you past the intimidation and your technophobia and show you how to set up properly at home. It's not as complicated as you think, but you got to talk to somebody who knows how to do it. And you can reach me over there at homevoiceoverstudio.com. Or if you want me to listen to your audio, maybe you've set up already and you want me to hear what it sounds like and any improvements you might want to make. Uh, or if you got a major problem, you can go to my website and there is a specimen collection cup that you can click on and that is a dropbox send me some raw audio there's some specific specific instructions yep on what read I the want instructions to read the instructions carefully and submit your audio that way and i will tell you if it needs some help or hey you're okay i had somebody send me some stuff today levels were a little low but mm -hmm. other than that guy's doing business he's working great and it's it like sounds good it is good it is good all right. Well, we got a ton of questions, and we're going to get to your questions right after this. This is Anthony Mendez, and you're watching VoiceOver Body Shop. From VoiceOver Essentials, here's the quote of the month. Terry, the sign is terrific. Thanks so much for the quick response. Greatly appreciated. It now adorns my home studio with pride. Thanks to you and one of my heroes, Harlan Hogan, for being there. And... Uh, again, thanks for so much for supporting VOBS, and they should have Harlan on more often, don't you think? Well, thanks. 
Brian Hammond, voiceover of Chemist Washington. So let's talk about our multicolored LED sign and the credit card size included remote. It tells the world you're actually gainfully employed and lets people nearby know to speak softly while you do your big shtick. Well, you can only get them over at voiceoveressentials.com. Voiceoveressentials.com. Go over there. The best way to get there is to just go to the bottom of our homepage, click on the picture of Harlan talking into his Portabooth Pro, and go there, look for the sign, the voiceover recording sign that will help you record with no background noise from your family and other folks. Thanks again, Harlan. Well, hello there. I bet you weren't expecting to hear some big-voiced announcer guy on your new orientation training for Snapchat, were you? This is Virgin Radio. Well, okay, we're not that innocent. There's jeans for wearing and there's jeans for working. Dickies, because I ain't here to look pretty. She's a champion of progressive values, a leader for California, and a voice for America. It's smart. It's a phone. It's a smartphone. But it's so much more. It's a, the files are ready. Don't forget to pick up the eggs. What time is hockey practice? Check out this song. It's the end of the road for Rick. It's just you and me, Rick. When hope is lost. The I-8 from BMW. Who said saving the planet couldn't be stylish? Hey, it's J. Michael Collins. Bet you think I'm going to try and sell you a demo now, huh? I think they speak for themselves. But I will give you my email. It's jmichael at jmcvoiceover.com. Now, if Dan will stop waxing his mustache for a minute, we'll get back to the show. Are you a voice actor? Well, you should probably check out this tool from Source Elements called Source Connect. That's right. If you don't have it yet, you ought to go get it. And you don't have to buy it right away. You can just go get a demo. You can go over to source-elements.com, get a 15-day free trial of this software, and get familiar with what this thing does. What does it do? It connects your studio to other studios around the world, for live direction, live recording. And this is the way a lot of the top tier work in the voiceover business is being recorded. So one way you can show that you're a pro voice actor, whether you've got a couple years in, 10 or more, is to have Source Connect on your website, have working knowledge of how it works, and better yet, actually have it. So you should definitely have that in, in your toolbox you can go get that demo, get it up and running. You don't have to have an iLock USB key. Just have the account set up on iLock and get it rocking. Go over to source-elements.com and sign up right now and tell them we sent you. And we'll be right back with some tech talk here on Voice Over Body Shop. Hi, this is Bill Farmer, and you are watching Voice Over Body Shop. It's great. <laughs> Okay, we're back mm -hmm. with questions from our vast audience that have been accumulating over the last couple of weeks. And so there's a lot of them. So we're going we're gonna to try and do a lightning round on these somewhat. <laughs> All right. Starting off with Jeff Holman. He says, hey, guys, I live in a house very close to the Van Nuys Airport, which is like right over there. Uh, and yeah, I know what that's like. Throughout the house, I have installed double-paned windows with differing... Glass thicknesses, quarter inch and three eighths inch, to attenuate different frequencies, resulting in an STC sound transmission class of uh, rating of 36. In addition, I have eight inches of blown insulation in the attic. My voiceover booth is in a small walk in closet in the center of the house. I put Oralex foam panels on the walls and in the corners, and, and the, the 10 inch, uh, 10 foot ceiling has that uh, old bumpy 60s acoustic ceiling look to it. At nighttime after 11 p.m., I can achieve a noise floor as, as good as minus 72. Can't beat that. Minus 72 is killer. However, during the day, whenever a plane lands at the airport, I hear it. What can I do to further isolate my sound booth? Would the use of ceiling clouds, as you discussed in yesterday's Tech Talk, the one we've been playing all last week, be of any help? I know they're designed to focus sound within the room, but might they also create a sound barrier that would reflect outside noises back out? Keep up the great work, guys. Clouds are really for... It's just acoustic. All it does is in it the room. absorbs the bouncing around already in your room and keeps it from bouncing around so much. That's yeah, what a cloud Bouncing does. around. So you're asking, would that keep sound out? Um, basically, no. What keeps sound out is a mass, few things. Yeah. Mass, a barrier of mass. So let's just, let me start with what you 
you know, you're on the right track with at least one thing, and that's the glass. Right. Having two pieces of glass, different thicknesses, heavy, with an airspace between is a good start. But unfortunately, that is just one tiny element to a very big problem. And those noises are penetrating the entire home, not just that one window right. that you've spent all that money on. So you, you, you've you kind of like, uh, I think of soundproofing as like plugging a dam. Right. You know, you have a big leak. So when you're plugging a hole in the wall, the first thing you think of is a window, right? Sound all must be coming through that window. And then you plug the big hole with another piece of glass. And you're thinking, oh, that must have done it. No. It's coming in through the attic. It's coming in through the walls. It's coming in all over the place. And an STC of 36, that's even if that was the right value, is not much at all. Like, we're looking at a, a soundproof voiceover studio. It's going to have an STC 60 of at least 50 to 60, which is, you're way far away from that. So, um, it's a system. you got to have mass, which is heavy, heavy drywall. You have to have an air gap. You have to have insulation. Everything has to be airtight, caulking in all seams. It's quite, it's quite expensive and costly to do it right. And like the room we're in right now, we don't hear the Van Nuys Airport because the walls in this room are over almost a foot thick. Yeah, well, yeah, the, they the, built a the, fortress here. Yeah, the inside walls are decoupled and have separate everything from the outside walls. You know, they're not connected to each other. Right. The only time we hear noise is when there's a really loud helicopter going boop, 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 landing, boop, boop. landing on the roof right yeah. that's it yeah. yeah so it's i hate to tell you it's there's a lot more to it than what you've done your instincts are right but there's you just kind of take a step right and and i and again i think steps. there's that confusion between sound transmission rejection and diffusion and, and absorption they are yeah. different totally different concepts for yeah. totally different things yeah so uh, yeah don't make that mistake acoustic foam does nothing to soundproof your room it's right. totally about the reflection inside. And the clouds room. do not either. That's right. But Steve, they do, they work great in here, though. Yeah. Acoustically, they're good. Steve Levin says, hi, guys. When recording Vox tracks, what That's is the industry voiceover standard? Tracks. Voiceover tracks. Yeah. What is the industry standard for sample and bit rate if you're providing to an agency or a studio? I understand mono for voice only is standard, but is 128, 44.1 kilohertz, 16-bit audio, good enough quality for agency or studio? And do you record at higher rates first and mix down to 128, 44, 116 bit as the final product? And my system is capable of mixing to almost any combo of these settings. P.S. I bought the Harlan Hogan VO1A signature mic with metal windscreen, and I love it, and I run it through my DBX267 tube-channel strip with great results. Boom. All right. Okay. Well, boy, there's a lot of meat in there. Yeah, but. a lot of questions. So um, MP3 mono is going to be a, a 128. That's the industry kilo, standard. Yeah, yeah, kilobit per second sample. Yeah, the 24-bit, uh, I think, is, is probably a little bit safer to work with. 16-bit's fine. Yeah, and let's not get our bit rates and our bit depths get, confused, right? So right. bit rate is the MP3 128. Right. 16 bit is the bit depth and that's that has to do with the recording quality that you initially record in wave or right. whatever. Yeah, 16 bits the bare minimum. I tell everybody nowadays just record everything, everything in 24 bit. When you export it out as an MP3, you choose you can choose all those other parameters. Right. Um if nobody says anything 128 MP3 mono you're you're good to go. I mean that that's going to satisfy just about everybody's needs. Right. If you don't know what it should be, make it that. Right. If they ask for something else, right. Make well, it, that. it depends on what is the client specifically asked for. If right. he's he's telling you forty eight k, and thirty two bit, wave, that's what you give him. Yep. But all software is capable of creating any one of those formats from your original recording. Yeah. So that's not a big deal. It only gets in the weeds with telephony, right. IVR, where the, the, Which the is settings all... get really weird. Yeah. But... Yeah. Now, here he talks about the Harlan Hogan VO1A, which is a great microphone. You know, it's a good mic, yeah. Wait, there's one right there that I'm not supposed to tap on. Uh, but he runs it through a DBX seven, a 676 tube channel strip with great results. Hey, man, I, you know what? If it sounds good, it is good. We don't know anything else about your channel strip or your signal chain or what else What else is in your studio. But it's not something we're going to go recommend. I mean, it's got no. tubes in it. Yeah. Tubes fail. Yeah. Tubes degrade over time. Tubes randomly do weird things. They get microphonic. 
We're not going to recommend stuff. Yeah. And There's generally, a lot of stuff that sounds great. Right. And and generally most preamp, you know, digital preamp uh, uh, gears with has like a analog front end. I think cuz uh, I think the 76 or 676 has analog in digital out. Oh, okay. I well, think it does. If memory serves. Yeah, I don't but know. yeah, an interface is got enough preamp in it to drive any microphone. Yeah, uh, the the, re the reason that a lot of people go to some of these higher end uh, preamps is because someone who doesn't know what they're talking about either tells them to do that or they're trying to achieve this warm sound. Right. The fact of the matter is, is most people are trying to hear you, you as you exist. And if you want to sound warmer, that's for a very, very specific thing. And Let I the think, producer decide. Yeah. And, you know, unless they're telling you, you know, can you make that a little bit warmer? I've never been told. Make your audio a little bit probably warmer. not your voice. Well, no, that's probably never going to happen. Yeah, so uh, <laughs> I'm not a big fan of that. <laughs> Chris Smith says, "I'm considering replacing Pro Tools with a less expensive editor." Mm -hmm. Good job, uh, but I've noticed Audacity and Twisted Wave both appear to be destructive editors. If this is true, can you recommend a replacement editor that costs less than Pro Tools? Well, well if, it's about anything, but I mean, let's talk about why what is matters. Not, what what is what Who is not cares if it's destructive? I mean, right. if you Record a wave file, then save it. There's your original. Now go and edit it to your heart's content. And when you're done, save it as a new name. Right. The original audio is there. Okay, I know it's not the same as Pro Tools. I know that in Pro Tools, every single edit is saved in what's called an EDL, edit decision list, which is saved as a Pro Tools file. And all the, all the versions of the wave files are stored and all this stuff. Who cares if you're just recording a dry voice track and editing it? Like, for 30 seconds. It's, it's, yeah. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if it's destructive. Really, it doesn't. Yeah. But to answer your question more directly, Reaper is by far the best replacement for Pro Tools. It's way less expensive. The guy that writes it's a genius. Is it really geeky under the hood and extremely overwhelming? Yes. But so is Pro Tools. So if you really want a replacement, I my first choice would be Reaper. Yeah. I, and I use Adobe Audition and that... That has and a, it has a destructive and non-destructive. So it's even right. That's even like the best of both worlds. Right. And Twisted Wave too, which you can record and it won't destroy what's there. With and, the punch and roll? Well, no, just when you hit record again, it yeah. will not erase that which is in front of it. It will just oh, it'll just in. push it over. Right. So <laughs> it's, it's true. you know, I mean, yeah. it, keep let's keep it simple. Uh, Mark Shalashenow says, "Hi guys, can you discuss normalization and compression?" For the thirty mm -hmm. thousandth time, uh, and recommend when it's appropriate to use either or both. I enjoy your show. Now, awesome. I would I would preface that by saying, if you don't know what it is, don't use it. And why would we use it? Uh, you know, com first off, compression. Compression is to essentially to simplify it really down is to make the loud stuff soft and the soft stuff louder, so everything is essentially the same Less or variation let, yeah the so it's not as dynamic time. exactly you want if you read right person you know in the first place chances are you know if you're if it's not really dynamic you've probably done it right it's when because we don't talk like this we we, we what we do is we talk in a very consistent normal pattern and a lot of people when you're less experienced you tend to hit the beginning of the sentence and, and the, this and is and the and time and that i was gonna go see the thing right. and then it dies off at the end so compression helps Level that out. Normalization is just Boy, an adjustment of the used. volume. Uh, it's just a volume control. So it's just what we call a, a absolute volume control. So when you set what the peak level is, it just sets it, and that that's it. So if you record it at minus ten, and that's the peak was minus ten, and you normalize to minus three, the volume goes up by seven. That's it. It just changes the game by seven. Right. Now I like to use normalization and compression together because. What I do is I'll use normalization to set the peak level before compression. That way I only have to set my threshold one time. The threshold is based on the input level. So if I know the input level is peaking at minus three, I can set my compression ratio or actually my threshold accordingly. And I don't have to like reset the threshold every time I record another file or another take. So that's, that's how I use normalization. Yeah. Um, beyond well, that? Yeah, I know Uncle Roy likes to talk about use normalization when you finish recording a file, the initial file, making sure that it's at the right level. But only if it's way too low, you know, if or if it's way too low, it's a you tweak. don't. 
Yeah, it's it's, it's, not it's a, a half DB to, gain to make up most. a huge amount of gain twenty DB later. Right, like, it's that's horribly good. misused to do that. Yeah, but also after you've done a fair amount of processing, even though you shouldn't be doing a fair amount of processing, it's the last thing you should do to make sure that everything is is uh, you know maximum maximum peak. Still leaving you know that between minus three and zero headroom for an engineer to I, uh, yeah. to work with it properly. Yeah. Uh, uh, next Stavis. question. Ken Stavis has a twisted wave in his iPad, um, and he'd like to mix and master voiceovers in the iPad, and he's well, new I, to this. I, obviously. Um, yeah. <laughs> I understand that there are effect stacks that I can get, but where and how do I get them, and is there training available on how to use them? In an iPad. So, yeah, there is no quote-unquote stack in twisted wave for the iPad, unfortunately. I, I can make a setting for you in the iPad, and then basically what I do is literally screen share and say, okay, here's the settings I used. Go into yours and duplicate them the best you can. But you can't it save is, them as a... as a. Not, there's no preset. Right. It just remembers the last thing you did. Right. And that's it. Not ideal. Yeah. Um, in terms of mixing, um, if you want to mix... If you're talking about mixing, like mixing layers of audio together... Not going to do that in Twisted Wave. No, you're going to have to use GarageBand. That's yeah, pretty Garage much the Band only way you're going to do that. In a few other apps. I think there's a Cubase for iPad now or something. Yeah. Um, but no, it's not the right tool for that. And when you say I'm new to this, do you mean are you new to voiceover? Are you new to producing? What are you new to? Because there's, there's certainly a big learning curve in terms of learning voiceover and learning voiceover production. So focus your energy on your voice acting and your voice work. Then no start looking into the production side. But talk to Dan or I uh, to get off on the right foot with all this stuff. Yeah. So you don't, don't waste a lot of money and time in the wrong direction. I think a lot of people think that, oh, well, I can because I can use all this stuff, Yeah. I, I should. And the fact of the matter is, is if you don't know how to use it, yeah. don't. Yeah. Record yeah. right in the first place. You'll save yourself so much trouble by getting your acoustics right, your mic mm -hmm. technique right, and setting proper levels initially. It eliminates a lot of those other problems. Don't use software and technology to make you sound, to make you sound great. If you're a good voice actor, you already sound great. The right. idea is to capture you as you exist sounding great. Right. Darren Sapp. Hey, have you guys done a show you can direct me to about building my own sound booth? Um, well, we have. <laughs> we've done so many variations on booths and all that stuff. And when you say build a sound booth, of course, that... That's kind of like, can you teach me how to build a plane? Right. You know, it's like, what kind of plane? Is it a propeller? Is it a balsa wood? Is it powered by an engine? Or a rubber It's band. way too yeah. general. But, yes, we did do a video <laughs> about making a sound booth, a very simple budget sound booth. If you go on uh, YouTube and search for EWABS, E-W-A-B-S, that's our old show, and the word studio suit. So EWABS Essentials Studio Suit. You'll see an episode on there where Dan and I demonstrate a booth that Dan made out of PVC pipe. And my mom's and backyard. heavy blankets. <laughs> we used to have this stuff, Dan, called Studio Suit. It's just, it's a very heavy insulated material. And we show how to make one. Um, and it, yeah, so this is a few years ago. It's still relevant now. You can build a booth out of PVC and some blankets. Yeah, you go to, you know, moving blankets, you know, specifically, you know, quilted moving heavy, blankets. Not, heavier not blankets. Not the felt ones. Yeah, heavy, heavy get. stuff is, you want it to be heavy and dense. It, it, is it going to be soundproof? No, but it will get rid of the bounciness and the echo and reflections mm -hmm. in your room. It will reduce some exterior noise. And if, yeah, you know, it, yeah, if you've got, you know, a limited exterior you like noise. A computer fan. That's right. It will. It will. It may take you to a point where you can record without too much background mm -hmm. noise. But not soundproofing, like that question earlier about, you know, how do you build a booth? Yeah, it's like you know, somebody's asking for the time. We're gonna have to build. Tell you how to build a watch. It was a part two on that. Where yeah. He did get in a little bit more detail, which I apologize for missing that. He does have a closet right now. He's using. Um, it takes a lot to set it up each time, and it's cramped. You know, a little creativity in your closet, setting it up correctly with the right combination of stuff, and you'd be amazed you can actually make it pretty usable. Yeah. But he's in Texas. Oh, it gets so it hot gets there. real in the hot. Summer. And of course, there's dogs everywhere because it's Texas. Yep. Um, and you know what? Fixing that stuff is, it, that's, that's uh, expensive. So a booth made out of blankets or a booth that you can do it yourself building, 
is not going to stop the dark barking of dogs without some serious construction. I mean, a lot of work. Um, so talk to us before you delve into that endeavor. And by God, don't buy doll box plans and expect that to make a soundproof booth. It will not do that at yeah. all. It's not easy. It's yeah. I, I think for voiceover, you know, trying to make the closet work. Uh, it's it's, get, it's a lot simpler. It, yeah, it's cramped, but there are, like George said, there are creative ways to do it. I've been building a lot of clo- studio closets lately, and they sound great. And yeah. the clients are happy because, one, a lot of times they don't have to move their clothes out. No, we leave the clothes in there. Yeah, boy, we we we. there was one booth I had. It was like a tiny little you know, 20 inch closet. Mm-hmm. And it's like, Oh, let me move my wife's coat over here. Big long fur coat. <laughs> Fabulous. Sounded great. You wouldn't believe that this wasn't a professional, you know, that this wasn't a big professional studio. It sounded fantastic. You got to sacrifice the lives of 30 rodents, at least put them up for use in your voiceover studio. You Absolutely. Um, T man. <laughs> Steve has been answering in the chat. Well, okay, uh, Steve, sense. thanks a lot. But thanks, uh, can you explain bass traps? I have some and tuning a small room for voiceover. So if you were to distill into can't live without room essentials for VO, what are they? So bass traps are, they're basically acoustic panels that are designed to absorb the lower frequency stuff. And in a small room, that is a lot of stuff. Right. You're closer to the microphone. You get standing waves at 90 degree angles and stuff like yeah. that. So that means the corners of the room are very close. You know, the walls, everything's very close in a tiny space. So we need a lot of this stuff to try to counteract that buildup of lower frequencies. In a big room, 8 by 10 feet, it's not a big deal or nearly as big a deal because the sound has a lot more room to bounce around right. and expand and, and, and dissipate and dissipate and it doesn't resonate the same way think of a uh, two soda bottles one half full one totally full you blow across the top the high the full one goes you blow across the, the lower one it goes you know the lower pitch is because there's more air volume so the bigger the room the lower the pitch is going to resonate the less you need the bass traps right which comes uh, to that question of big room versus small room yeah, you know, and, a, and a lot of people are buying booths or want to build one. Right. They don't really understand that while a soundproof booth might be really good soundproof, it's kind of a relative term. Somewhat quieter booth. Yeah, uh, <laughs> that you're creating certain problems with that, that a larger room might actually make things sound a little bit cleaner. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's a trade-off. You know? It is. It so. is a trade-off for sure. Yeah. Larry Oliver Larry. says... Is it a good idea to have a microphone professionally cleaned? If so, how often? Like the TLM 103s and 416s. Uh I do keep them covered when not in use, Mm -hmm. and they seem to sound great. Just curious if if it's a good maintenance type of thing. Uh Also, if one lives in a flyover state, do you send them to an authorized service place or take a chance on a local one? Well, let me start with the very last thing. Do not take a chance on a local shop to fix a sensitive condenser. They'll fix it with a with a wire brush, probably. Do yeah, do not. If you if you're gonna get a Neumann or a Sennheiser repaired, if you don't know where to go, then start with the website Sennheiser's website for authorized repair. They know they do it right. Yeah. Otherwise, it, like I said tonight, we mentioned the shop here in Burbank. Um, you're not in Burbank, I understand that. But so if you're gonna mail it somewhere or ship it somewhere, um, get I mean get a quote from Audio Rehab, you know, because they know what they're doing. Certain things and certain services require a, a higher level of precision is not the word. Well, you have to have a shop that's yeah. extremely clean, yeah. like a clean room environment. Like they're building a space probe. Yeah, where there's absolutely no particles of dust or anything in the air. So for certain services, that's what you're going to be looking at. But to go back to the beginning, should you have them cleaned and how often? How often? I don't know. I mean, five or ten years maybe. Um you, the thing is, you don't know if they sound bad until they start, until Not, they get until really they don't bad. sound good. Like yeah. if you have a brand new one and then you have a ten-year-old mic, you will probably notice the difference between right. them. You right. probably will if you hear them back back to back. Right. So show how often. Ah oh, man, gosh, I don't know if you. Have a house that's not air conditioned. The windows are open all year round. You yeah, smoke probably every year. <laughs> but if it's a pretty clean house with a filtration system, an HVAC system, not a problem. You know, probably not that no. often. If you're hanging your mic upside down, usually things don't accumulate on it, except around here, and you just go. 
Yeah, blow dust, the dust isn't going to sit on the diaphragm when it's hanging vertically, probably. Which, which so. is one of the reasons you yeah. hang it vertically. Yeah. Uh, and our question. final last question from Michael Kennedy. Uh, thoughts on the Sennheiser MKE 600 versus the 416? A, a worthy mic? Boy, we what's what's a worthy mic? I mean, Sennheiser doesn't make anything that's junk. Right. right. Is it going to sound exactly like the 416? No. Um, is it going to sound like a microphone, though, picking up your voice? Yeah, is it going to yes. sound reasonably good? Yes. The difference you're probably going to notice, I guess, with that mic is maybe it's going to be a little noisier. It's going to have a little bit more hiss to it. Right. Because that's what I find with shotgun mics especially, the cheaper ones are much noisier. Right. Um, so that's going to be a real big difference. Um, is it worthy? I don't know. It's not a mic that in our circles, or at least in my experience, has been brought up all that I often. Haven't, I've never seen it. As yeah. an alternative um, to the 416. Um, I can tell you we've tested out one a couple months ago uh, on my show, the Pro Audio Suite, called the Rode NTG4. Yeah. And if you're looking for a budget shotgun, that sounds pretty close to a 416. Like, close enough that a producer would have no problem Adjusting, making it work. Yeah. That one's a pretty good option, around three hundred dollars. I don't know of any mics that are fall under that three hundred dollar mark that are going to sound like a four sixteen. No way. Um, that's the most cost effective one I've seen. But can't say much about the six hundred. But send a sample. We'll do a sound well, check or, a, or a, like. you know, send Dan a specimen. And we'll let you know what we think of the sound. If you happen to have that mic, we'll let you know. All right. Well, that's a lot of questions. That was a good lightning round, though. We got those out. For Tech Talk number seven here. <laughs> uh, so um, if you got a question, send it to us here at the guys at V-O-B-S dot TV. And uh, we'll answer it like we just did. Yeah, that was great. Thanks uh, that was to great. everybody for sending in so many yeah. questions. So we really, if, if you got more, send it. them in. Well, that makes this show run. And you know, you guys, I got to say, we get questions. We've been doing this for eight years. Yeah. We're going to see questions from time to time. We've answered many, times, many times. Yeah. So if we're if we get a little like ah, we've seen that before, but we apologize. But yeah, ne- we're, it's okay. You can always ask a question, even if it seems like something that's basic. That's what we're here for. Right. So we are here to enlighten you yeah. and to lighten your burden. <laughs> How's that? Okay, good. Anyway, all right, we'll be right back to wrap things up right after this. <laughs> This is Bill Ratner, and you're enjoying Voice Over Body Shop with Dan Leonard and George Whittem. VOBS.TV. What question do we get most often? Well, far and away, it's how do I even get started in Voice Over? And we have a great answer to that question. Take vo to go gos free Getting Started in VO class. You heard right, it's free, and it's available online 24 7 at gettingstartedinvo.com. That's gettingstartedinvo.com. If you've been watching VOBS and thinking that you need to get in gear and start your own voiceover career, this is the class you should start with. You'll learn about the vocal skills you need, the storytelling skills you need, the equipment you need, and the business skills you need. All in one single comprehensive online class taught by vo to go David H. Lawrence the 17th. This class won the Backstage Reader's Choice Award four years in a row. And again, there's no charge. It's absolutely free. Want to take it? Sure you do. Go to gettingstartedinvo.com. That's gettingstartedinvo.com. Your dynamic voiceover career requires extra resources to keep moving ahead. Now there's one place where you can explore everything the voiceover industry has to offer. That place is voiceoverextra.com. Whether you're just exploring a voiceover career or a seasoned veteran ready to reach that next professional level, stay in touch with market trends, coaching, products and services while avoiding scams and other pitfalls. Voiceover Extra has hundreds of articles, free resources and training that will save you time and help you succeed. Learn from the most respected 
respected talents, coaches, and industry insiders when you join the online sessions bringing you the most current information on topics like audiobooks, auditioning, casting, home studio setup and equipment, marketing, performance techniques, and much more. It's time to hit your one-stop daily resource for voiceover success. Sign up for a free subscription to newsletters and reports and get 14 bonus reports on how to ace the voiceover audition. It's all here at voiceoverextra.com. That's voiceoverxtra.com. Ooh, I think I heard the voice of a body shop. I did. I did hear the voice of a body shop. Beetle old body shop. Are you confused about how to set up and maintain a professional quality voiceover studio? No wonder. The information out there is mostly mythology. This is the best microphone to use. You have to have a preamp. You need a soundproof booth. This software is the best. Your audio must be broadcast quality. Consult with someone who knows the truth. Someone who's been there, in the trenches, doing voiceover for over 30 years. Someone with unparalleled experience with voiceover studios who's worked with hundreds of voice actors and designed hundreds of personal studios. He knows how to teach and cares about your success in one of the harshest environments known to voiceover, your home. Dan Leonard, the home studio master. Separate myth from fact and get a handle on your personal voiceover studio. Contact the home studio master at homevoiceoverstudio.com. All right. Well, what a fun show. You know, yeah. It's this this is why we do this show. It's really important that uh, we get the right people on here to talk to you and give you the information you need. Who are our donors of the week? Donors of the week. We got a plethora of them. Um, a lot of these names I've read before, which is why you should subscribe because your name will be read here all the time. You got it. Like Don Griffith, Martha Kahn, Shanna. Or Shauna, Shauna, as I was instructed oh, is the way to say her name. Pennington Baird, Joseph Valentinetti, uh, Stephanie Sutherland, Patty Gibbons, Amanda Fellows, and Tom Pinto. The Tom Pinto. All right. Very cool. All right. Hey, show us your booths. Yeah. These now this is not this is this is the hoax studio. Yeah, this is a obviously a, a very professional more of a studio. studio. Yeah. Something that you don't necessarily <laughs> Hey! hey. <laughs> no, is this not the kind of thing most voice actors need to aspire to? But hey, you know, if you hey, got if you can afford 150 it, yeah. grand kicking around, you can build something like this. Yeah, and you'll be happy send, to do it. For send in your pictures. Make sure they're landscape, not and, not portrait. You know, make them sharp. They Boy. shouldn't be Instagram quality. They should be broadcast quality. Oh, yeah. did I say that word? You broadcast, said broadcast quality. They should be nice and sharp, and we'll we'll throw them up on the wall behind us. Just shoot it with your iPhone. It'll be fine. Yeah. Um, just, just put it on a tripod. Yes. Uh, once again, if you want to work with George, you go to? GeorgeTheTech.com. And Dan is over at? HomeVoiceOverStudio.com. Mm -hmm. Happy to help you out there. Uh, let's see. You want to be in our studio? We're on it live every other Monday night, so we won't be on next week. And if you ain't sure, just email us. Email us at theguys at vobs.tv. We'd like to have you here in the studio with us because it's fun to have a live audience. It, it makes is. Us, gives us a little bit more energy, Just even though you know the coffee works pretty well, yeah, too. Tonight we had to substitute audience for coffee. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but it helped. It, it, it worked. Uh, all righty. Well, and if you want to be here, just write to us again at theguys at vobs.tv. Slash audience or subject yeah, matter put audience. Audience and subject that way. That's right. Don't miss All that. right. Well, we need to thank our sponsors who make mm -hmm. this show absolutely possible, like Harlan Hogan's Voiceover Essentials, Voiceover Extra. Uh, let's see here. Source Elements. Yep. VO to go go. Uh, VoiceActorWebsites.com. And J. Michael Collins demos. All righty. Well, we also need to thank the Dan and Marcy Leonard Foundation for the betterment of live webcasting. Uh, mm -hmm. Couldn't do it without that fine, fine foundation. Uh, also, uh, our producer, Catherine Curtin, for getting us great guests. Mm -hmm. uh, Mike Merlino in the chat room tonight. Thanks, hey, Mike. Man. Boy, you got all those questions in. That was fabulous. Yeah, thanks. Uh, yeah. Our technical director, Mike's mom, Sue Merlino, boop, boop, boop. who does a great job making it happen 
like a real TV show. Wait, it is a real TV show. <laughs> it's just not on NBC. It's the future of TV. Right that's here. right. It, and we're living it now. Uh, and, of course, Lee Penny, simply for being Lee Penny. Well, that's going to do it for us uh, this week. We really appreciate you tuning in or clicking in or whatever it is you guys do out there. Uh, this business is, as George was saying, it's not easy. You, there's, there's a lot of hard things you need to learn. Technically, we're here to help. That's why we're here every week. And we want to show you the best of what goes on in the business and getting the best information out there. So tune in every week here on VoiceOver Body Shop. And uh, like we always say, if it sounds good. It is good. All right. We got that right. <laughs> Have yourselves a great week, everybody. We'll see you next time here on VoiceOver Body Shop. I'm Dan Leonard. I'm George Widow. And this is VoiceOver Body Shop or VO BDS. BDS.